So the mines called it and the world, in fact, didn't end in 2012. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you can't get your fill of apocalyptic movies to fill any kind of non-world-ending void that you might have. There's countless events that could cause the end of the world, be it robots, zombies, aliens or nuclear weapons. If Hollywood has its way, the human race will continue to be on the brink of endangerment forever. So, end of the world movies are right up there for me with zombies, Jack, any of the... Pretty much any of the movies we've been talking about today. What are your thoughts? Um, I think it is it's really funny that we've been constantly in the end of the world for the past 2,000 Haven't years. Have we? Since the 80s, we've been in the end of the world. 80s was the beginning. Yeah. It's was, coming. Yeah. <laughs> I know. We just don't know how soon, how far away it is. But there was a funny, um, there was a funny uh, small like bit of information that um, that Paul wrote in one of his letters to um, to new Christians. He said. Uh, this is 2,000 years ago, he said, it doesn't really matter if you get married or not because the end is coming so soon <laughs> that it's not going to make any difference. <laughs> Look, the end of the world predictions have been around for ages. You've had Notre Dame doing it. You've had loads of people doing it. Why is it that Hollywood sort of jumps onto it and holds onto it? Because I did a little bit of research on this and before the 1950s, there were four apocalyptic movies. And then you saw in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s, the numbers started to get bigger and bigger. In the last 10 years alone, there's been 75 big make apocalyptic movies. Are we obsessed with the end of the world? Are we wanting the end of the world? Or are we simply just transferring exactly what we're doing in everyday society with the environment and war and terrorism and fighting and saying, you know what, let's make a movie about how it's all <laughs> going to go down anyway. May as well. I mean, of course, there's nothing more exciting than the idea of every man fending for themselves, you know? It's it, just we're fueling bored. the doomsday preppers. That's all it's doing. Now you've got this massive cult of people, these doomsday preppers that are digging yeah. bunkers underneath Survivalists the ground. Survivalists living out in the middle of Antarctica and shelters. all the John West shelters. tuna they yeah. can, <laughs> just so that they're all right if it all goes, yeah. to, all goes to rubbish. I don't know, there's a lot of these movies coming out. That being said, there is one that I do quite like. Oh, I like a movie. Hunger Games. That was... They are making a sequel for that too, I believe. Yeah, I, li I rated Which that. Which makes sense because it absolutely killed it in the box office. It was mm. something like $400 million it grossed. Mm. Production budget was around $80 million. Mm. You know, why wouldn't you make a sequel to it? I think I liked it because it was post-apocalyptic rather than the end of the world because you've seen all of these movies come with the big tidal waves and the craters and the meteorites and all of these things hitting the earth. But that's probably why I liked Hunger Games. Tell us about the special effects in these movies. When we see a, f a scene like a massive wave crashing over New York and all the iconic landmarks flying down or we see, you know, countries one by one implode, what kind of special effects does that take and what do you think about them? Well, um, basically what they do is they'll look at a lot of reference videos on YouTube um, of the actual apocalypse that's happening around us and then they just use the... <laughs> <laughs> they use the, um, the, the waves coming in, the tsunamis coming in and the buildings collapsing and things like that. I'm sorry, that. they reference YouTube to find out how it's actually going to happen? Oh, no, no? they'll look at, um, they'll look at uh, footage of destruction oh. and then they'll recreate that destruction right. on computer using mm -hmm. um, computer simulations. So if um, one of the things I did was was wave simulation and mm -hmm. water simulation. So basically they'll build a, a, a little model city in front of them and then they'll have the wave at certain settings and then they just press play and the wave will like fire through the city automatically when the computer will run the simulation to see how the destruction takes place. It's scary. I remember when I lived in LA and I saw an end of the world, one of those movies, and it was the city of LA. I was looking for my apartment. <laughs> I was sitting in the cinema looking for my apartment thinking, right, I need to move. I need to move to the east side. I know. Do you think it scares people? Well, I think um, when I was in San Francisco, I actually, there was a stage where it was, there'd just been the um, earthquakes in Japan and yeah. everyone in the whole city was freaked out because they thought there was going to be a second San Francisco earthquake. Mm -hmm. And I actually left because at the end, because I was so terrified from this hypo, um, sort of mass hysterical fear that was going on in 2010 about um, about there being an earthquake over there, and there mm. was of course no earthquake. That but it's true. just the media and the yeah. word of mouth and yeah. the like the everyone sort of. I'll tell you what though, those special effects for the things like the day after tomorrow must be convincing because I remember when some of the floods happened and all the pictures mm. were being shared around Facebook. One of the hoax pictures was a grab from the day after tomorrow. <laughs> People were sharing around. No way. I know.
That's kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, the thing is, though, as scary as all of these images are, and as much as they sort of make us go, oh, no, we all still run to the cinema to watch it. <laughs> it's like a train wreck that you can't look away from. Yeah. I mean, they play on things that are relevant, really. You know, you've got, um, you know, the day after tomorrow, playing on yeah. global warming. Yeah. You have things like Land of the Dead, where they play on capitalism, you know, the mm. downfall of capitalism, that kind of thing. Mm. It's all very relevant. I think that's why we are so scared, because it is relevant to our lives. Mm -hmm. So when you see things like this happening, you think, what if that happens to me? Mm -hmm. But it make a survival plan. That's it, that's it. And then you start to see, you know, back in the, like I was telling you before, in the 50s, 60s and 70s, they were already making those movies. But of course, back then they were using things like um, aliens and zombies and things coming from outer space to hit us. Now we've got all this bioterrorism and all of these sort of um, missiles and all this new technology that they say are going to end the world. And they're making movies about all those things. So who knows? It'll be, they'll probably combine the Hunger Games and one of the apocalyptic movies and it'll be every man for himself. <laughs> And that's how the next movie will go. That's kind of the thrill of it, though. Every man yeah. for himself, thinking out what you're going to do. That's it. No, it's, I don't know, it's a movie genre that keeps growing. And each year you see a couple more come out. This year we've got The Host coming out. I don't know if you've seen the preview for that, but that's another one there. Um, and there's, there's just no shortage of them. I agree. Mm. And so the highest grossing film, apocalyptic film that we ever saw, and like you said, it was The Hunger Games, $408 million in the box office. That's huge. When we look at some of these movies that are coming out that are 50, 60, 70 million dollars, why is it that you, that you think that we're infatuated with things like The Hunger Games and these kinds of movies? I haven't seen The Hunger Games myself. Mm -hmm. I know, treason. But from what I understand, they're, they're pitched against each other. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of the, the thrill of it again? It's like the state of origin. People are sadistic. <laughs> they like seeing that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe. I maybe. think, I think um, when, when I was in San Francisco, I got the impression that they were going to, at some point in the you know, near to distant future, try and test the waters with yeah. a kind of gladiatorial, real, like kind of TV reality TV shows that use some some level of actual real actually, violence. Actually, I have seen one like that. It was a social science or a science experiment. I think it was actually called The Experiment. And they took a group of scientists and there were some carpenters and there were some academics and they basically simulated the end of the world. And so they put them in this downtown East LA kind of area, shut them off from humanity, shut them off from electricity, water, everything, to see how long that they would survive and how ingenious they could become and how innovative they would be to try and recreate life. I think that we're quite fascinated. How did they go? Yeah, th look, they did be better than the contestants on Big Brother. <laughs> the, nobody killed each other. Um, but it was definitely, it was really, really interesting to see them have to recreate these day-to-day -day mod cons that they needed to mm. live. So which ones do you think you're going to see coming more frequently now? I'm, I'm thinking zombies. Oh, I think the zombies will have it stay just like the vampires. What do you reckon, Liam? I think they're going to give us um, more alien conspiracy movies, mm -hmm. more zombie, you know, man versus zombie and yeah. more kind of survivalist, like trying to say zombies are actually people without food and without mm. desperate people, kind of and draw, try and draw it, make people draw links together. Mm. And they're going to have to up the game on the special effects too, aren't they? Yeah, that's it's right. Insane thing. Well, while it's definitely not the end of the world, unfortunately, it is the end of another episode of Showreel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.